Bonjour, valued viewers. This is Nanoburger, and today we are talking about the Graflex Anniversary 4x5 camera. That is this camera that you see in front of you. Uh, this is called a press camera and takes a uh, 4x5 sheet film negatives. Uh, you probably can't really judge the uh, the beastliness of this camera. However, here I have just a regular film camera, a Canon AE-1, and you can see the size difference between the two. Uh, obviously, the uh, Graflex is a whole lot bigger, a whole lot heavier, and is uh, designed and produced uh, in the 1940s. Uh, however, uh, you normally say this is obsolete, which it is. However, it is still has value today because it is used by people who want a cheap way to get into large format photography. And I've always been fascinated by these cameras. Um, actually, I'm not a newbie to the Graflex line. I have a baby uh, speed graphic, which is uh, takes a two, two, in, two and a quarter inch by three and a quarter inch negative. And I also have the three by four uh, variety of speed graphic as well. In fact, I have three of them because they're uh, significantly cheaper than either the smaller or the larger one. Um, however, I always wanted the four by five one. However, they retain their value very well. Uh, if you look on eBay today, you'll find a range from $200 to $500. So I've always been kind of out of my price range. However, I picked up this one for $50. And you might be asking why they want to sell this for $50. And the answer is because it is in extremely poor condition. In fact, uh, as I was kind of opening it up here, stuff... Uh, kept on falling off of it, uh, so I'll have to keep track of this these uh, things and hopefully add them on a little bit later on. Uh, what I want to do with this, uh, you know, I wasn't tricked by the uh, the seller. Uh, I knew full well it was going to come in very poor condition, uh, which is the reason why it was fifty dollars. Uh, reason I got this is I've had some experiences with my other Graflex cameras on restoring them and getting back them back into uh, photography shape. So I figured I'd do this as a challenge. Uh, probably bitten off more than I can chew now that I uh, have it in my hot little hands and is able to inspect it. But uh, we will give it a try and I will uh, post uh, the my progress on YouTube and the techniques I've developed to try to... Uh, uh, get this thing back, back up and running. Uh, and hopefully if you find an old camera like this and you want to do the same, uh, this will be a benefit to you. Uh, what I'd like to do right now, though, is kind of go through the inspection uh, of the camera. Uh, as I said, it is uh, in very poor shape. Everything that can be rusted or corroded is, in fact, rusted and corroded. Um, so, on the back here... This is the uh, uh, the, fill, the spring back for the camera. This particular back was actually a high-end back and may not actually be part of the original camera. Uh, I've noticed that there are a lot of modifications to this camera, so this camera was uh, probably very well used and very well loved and uh, just kind of... Uh, uh, was abandoned and forgotten about for a long time until I, I, I've got it to my hot little hands. Uh, this back uh, opens up like that. A little uh, box comes out. And uh, inside here is the ground glass. So you can do uh, ground glass uh, focusing. Um, it uh, actually seems to be not too bad. Uh, the... Uh, uh, the hinges here are corroded. There's a lot of uh, there's a lot of rust on them, and if you kind of look on the side here, you can see kind of the rust kind of pools. Uh, so uh, it's my theory that this has uh, probably been uh, kind of underwater almost, 
or at least partially submerged in water for a while. Uh, I was thinking maybe in the bottom, in a flooded basement or something along those lines. However, the uh, it's, it still kind of works, so I'm happy about that. Um, let's kind of take off the back here. Okay. As you can see, lots of corrosion here. In fact, the, all the corrosion seems to be on one side of the camera, this right-hand side. And if you look on the ground glass here, uh, you can see, I'm not sure if it comes out, but you can see a uh, mark on the ground glass. It looks like a, a water mark. And of course, everything under this is corroded to heck. Uh, you can probably see the uh, uh, all this corrosion on the springs here. Um, so my theory is it was submerged in water with this side down, uh, leading to this, uh, this mark right here. Okay, continuing the inspection, uh, since this half, or this, uh, I don't know, maybe a third of the camera that was theoretically underwater, uh, most of the corrosion is on this side of the camera. Uh, as you can see here, the, um... Uh, the rangefinder here is corroded. The uh, this bracket here, everything that can rust is rusted. Uh, this is rusted on here. Uh, the shutter in the back here uh, uh, also seems to be inoperative. Uh, this thing, which would normally cock the shutter, is frozen in place, and I can see uh, rust on the uh, the bearing here. Um, Although, down here, the tensioning spring actually seems to be working just fine. It goes through all the tensions, and you can uh, let them go. It's a little sticky, but uh, I'm kind of uh, happy about that, since this is one of the uh, most annoying things to repair. And, uh, uh, of course, the, the viewfinder here has lost its th uh, kind of peephole. You can got it right here. Uh, luckily, I can put that on pretty easily. Uh, on this side, again, the submerged side, we see that the uh, leather has come off the uh, uh, the wooden base. So uh, hopefully we can get that back on there. And the bellows itself, uh, it seems to be working. Uh, the, However, it is very stiff and brittle. Uh, so we're going to try to recondition that uh, sometime in the future. Uh, oddly enough, I put a light uh, inside, and it seems to be light tight, so uh, that's certainly a bonus because uh, uh, replacing that is a big pain in the butt. Uh, on the front here, uh, we see, uh, first of all, the base has, you probably can't see it, uh, has this uh, kind of yellowish discoloration, and if we move the front standard back a little bit, uh, you can see it stops at a very specific point. Uh, so my working theory is perhaps after this got kind of ruined uh, with uh, being submerged, uh, that it was just used for display. And this front got some UV damage, uh, as you can see with a, with a different type of uh, uh, color there. Um, and the... Uh, uh, on the front here, the front uh, lens board uh, has some interesting things on it. Uh, it apparently has uh, RTV, that's room temperature vulcanization, silicone rubber sealant. Um, the guy who owned this camera uh, used that to attach the lens board to the front standard here. Um, not sure why, but um, there you are. Uh, the uh, uh, the shutter and lens itself uh, actually seems to work pretty well. You know, I can uh, uh, take it apart, lubricate it, uh, make sure everything's good to go inside there. But uh, I'm really happy about that because uh, a good sample of this in working condition usually runs about a uh, hundred dollars. So uh, I am fifty dollars ahead right now. Uh, again, there's more uh, RTV here. Uh, the 
the lens has this uh, adapter on it. This is a adapter for um, uh, filters, Series 6 filters maybe, or some other series of Kodak filter. Uh, basically, they're round glass filters you stuck in there, and then you press it on here. And the guy who owned the camera decided to put this on here again with this uh, silicone rubber RTV. So it'll be interesting to get that off there and hopefully uh, uh, get this working a little bit better. Um, and on the front here, which you can't see, uh, the person who owned this had to make a new uh, distance scale focusing system. Uh, my working theory is that uh, the camera had a regular spring back and he kind of upgraded to this uh, graph lock back. And in doing so, he changed the focal plane just a little bit, uh, enough to screw up the focusing. So he made up his own uh, scale here. So uh, he's a very hands-on photographer, whoever uh, uh, had this. And I say he, you know... It was probably a, a male that had this, although uh, female people, female photographers, photographers existed. Um, but um, at that point in time, in the 40s and the 50s, if it was a professional photographer, it probably was male. Um, okay, continuing. Uh, as you can see here, there's some mildew on here, which will hopefully clean up. Uh, there's one last modification that he put on here. This is a cold shoe, uh, which is basically something to hold accessories, uh, perhaps a, uh, a light meter or maybe uh, an early uh, strobe flash. Uh, the, the normal flash they have with these would be attached over here. Uh, generally, it would, it would look like a, a lightsaber because that's what it was, <laughs> lightsaber Luke Skywalker's lightsaber was originally this uh, 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 kind of potato masher flash uh, uh, accessory. I uh, don't know. So, uh, like I said, this is in very poor condition. I'm wearing gloves right now because this is just filthy. And uh, one of my first uh, jobs will be to just kind of clean this up so I can work on the, uh, the mechanics of it uh, without getting my hands all dirty. So what's the story behind this? Well, story for me, I got it on eBay. Uh, it was from a small town in uh, upstate New York, right next to Rochester, uh, which makes a lot of sense because Rochester was uh, the kind of um, uh, the center for Graflex production and uh, Kodak. So it kind of makes sense that it was from there. Um I'm thinking that perhaps uh, maybe a soldier coming back from World War II uh, perhaps went to journalism school um, with a GI Bill and needed a, a good camera to, to do his uh, photojournalism and bought this. And over time, he used it and used it, and it's gotten uh, more and more modifications to it, got the upgraded back. Uh, how to change the focusing scale, how to use a lot of uh, room temperature vulcanization to keep everything uh, good to go. And then maybe as the film uh, stocks got better, you could get better uh, resolution, better, uh, better quality from very s smaller negatives. So uh, that's when the uh, 35 millimeter cameras started uh, coming into popularity. And eventually, uh, press cameras kind of went out of style just because uh, you only had uh, uh, one shot at a time uh, or two shots and one uh, cut film back. Uh, it was heavy, difficult to use, uh, although versatile. So uh, perhaps it uh, went on display and, uh, on, in his living room while he used uh, better cameras uh, in, his, uh, in his work. Then eventually, perhaps he died, and the kids cleaning out uh, the the house. They just kind of found this obsolete camera, so they just stuck it in the basement, and the basement uh, flooded and came with a lot of damage. And then cleaning out the basement, uh, 
Maybe they just gave it to a Goodwill and somebody picked it up there and sold it on eBay and then I have it. Um, this notional photographer, I even know his name. His name is Brewster. Uh, he had the uh, forethought of naming or putting his name with a Dymo uh, uh, embossing tape on the, on the bottom here. Um, so... Uh, what I want to do is, uh, first of all, do a lot of cleanup, uh, try to get the leather all back into more supple form, and then uh, try to clean up uh, the, um, the focal plane shutter here. Uh, I have no clue if it uh, works or not. Uh, like I said, everything is uh, rusted shut, but we'll put in some... Uh, uh, Penetrating oil and see how that goes. Uh, maybe a little exercise and I can get it working again. And uh, eventually I want to get this back to uh, photography shape. Uh, one of the things that I'll probably give up on early is the, uh, the range finder here. Uh, these things were very delicate instruments. And if it was underwater for a long period of time, there's I doubt there's anything in there that's not rusted and... Uh, may leave it on for aesthetics uh, or just take it off totally. Uh, luckily, there are, there are plenty of other ways to focus a, a speed graphic camera. Uh, you can do it on the, uh, on the ground screen. Uh, you can do it with your little uh, uh, range uh, meter right here. Um, or you can just uh, kind of guess at it sometimes. Sometimes that's okay, but normally not. Uh, so there we are. Uh, hopefully this, this will be a series of videos and I'll track the progress and I will keep you informed. So have a nice day and thank you for watching this video.